So a scale of one to 10, how hyped are you right now? Because it's finally time. We're gonna actually test, other than Bryce's fan, we're gonna test four more of your guys' designs right here today. We're gonna see who can dethrone Mr. Bryce, uh, his uh, Dark Duel Rocket fan. We're gonna see whose fan's better than that one, because I got four fans, five spot leaderboard, so I mean, Bryce, you live another day because you're gonna be at least number five, if not still number one when this is all said and done. But like I said, I got four fans. We're gonna test four of them. Your guys' designs that I pulled from my fan showdown email, and if this is your first video and you're kind of confused right now, well, essentially, I have an email address, fanshowdown at gmail.com, where you guys can send me your 3D models of fan designs for a 120 millimeter fan that will test on a Noctua A12X25 body to try to see who out there can make the best fan, one that can actually beat the A12X25, if that's possible. But if not, who at least is uh, the best one in the audience of making fans or designing fans. And we got some pretty interesting ones today. So enough jibber jabber, let's get right into it. The first fan, so essentially, I'm just gonna call them what you guys name them. So a lot of the emails, I, I will say that these aren't the first four that I picked. I did go to the very back of my email address and start, start from the bottom up, but there was some fans that had some modeling issues. Either they were scaled wrong, uh, they were inches and not metric or vice versa that I didn't have the model to scale it, or there was features missed, or they were too big. So these are like the first four that I found that were actually usable on my test bench. So if you're wanting to you know, make a fan model and send it to this uh, fan showdown, at gmail.com so you can get on this and show everybody how awesome are you are at designing. Uh, make sure you go to my Thingiverse and look at the template that I have. So I have a template of the hub and I got a dimensions or I got a drawing with dimensions on it that show you critical dimensions that you gotta, you gotta meet in order for it to fit on my fan body. But I do have four that we'll check out today. The first one being this one called a simple fan. And this fan was made by Carl. So I'm just gonna go by the name either you call yourself in your email or a name you sign it by and then whatever you call the fan. So he called, Carl called this the simple fan and it's pretty straightforward. We got what, 11 blades, standard configurations, forward swept, pretty thin. Looks like he does have a bit of a, you know, a, an actual wing profile to it. And you got like these vortex generators on both the bottom side and the top side. So that's interesting because we, uh, we did test vortex generators in the past. Uh, on the leading edge of the top side of the blade, but not on the bottom. And I've n the fan that I used did not actually have like uh, what you would consider an actual wing profile. I mean, it was pretty much just a straight line. So although he says it's a simple fan, it's got some detail to it. Uh, the only thing that's got me kind of concerned is that on the back side. So one of the dimensions that I have on my Thingiverse account is the hub size, because if you go too deep, like you can go taller, there's no nothing stopping you from going taller. We're not stacking fans or putting pu pulling from radiators. You could go higher, but if you go deeper, kind of like these blades are, or they all kind of stick off. Uh, there, you do run in the possibility of maybe hitting the supports on the back side of the, the fan motor. I don't know if this is going to, I guess we'll find out shortly, but one small issue. So that's number one, Carl with a simple fan. This next one's kind of cool. So this one's from Thomas and I don't know if he called it this or if I called it this, but either way, this is the inside outside fan. And I just like, I like the idea behind it. So you got just what? five blades on the inside, but then you also have five blades around the outside. So you got the standard five blades coming out from the hub and then along the ring on the outside, a lot of you guys wanted to see rings on many of the fans I made, but he's tried something new that I haven't seen before. He's got blades coming from the ring towards the hub, but not actually connecting. And you got these kind of uh, winglets on the edge. And then if you look closely at the blades, like the ones emanating from the hub to the ring, they're actually a double layer. So you have two two layers of fans and then extra fans coming out from the side. This is very Thomas. It's very interesting you got here. This is pretty cool in and of itself. Uh, it printed a little rough, you can see. Uh, supports didn't like to disconnect, but for the most part, the Prusa didn't do too bad. It doesn't look like you actually have a wing profile, but we all know that that's not super necessary. And I'm just very interested to see what this sounds like and then how well it performs. So Thomas, A plus on design right out of the gate. I'll give you that. Now this one's interesting. So this, I believe is called Apollo or he called it Apollo. Uh, the guy that designed it, his name is Bork, is why he's going by in his, in his email account. But when you look at this thing initially, so the first thing I thought when I printed this out was, well, look, that's pretty thick blades. It's very interesting. Kind of reminded me like a, a real crazy shuriken, some sort of 
fancy Ninja Star, but then after it printed, I really got a close look at it. I noticed that the way that it orients itself on the fan is this way. And based on its rotation, it's not gonna move, it's not gonna blow any air, I know that. It's shaped the wrong way. So either that was a oopsie or Bork has got the big brain syndrome and he's gonna be, I mean, essentially you're pulling the air now. So the blades, if they were oriented like this would essentially push the air in if it was rotating this way, but it's not, it goes like this and it rotates this way. So it's essentially gonna suck the air, suck, suck the air through the, the radiator, which is very interesting, but will it work? I don't know. It is heavier, like compared to the other ones, uh, especially these two, especially like these two guys. Uh, they're right around 17 grams, but this one was like a hefty, I can't even remember exactly, I think it was like 40 something grams. She's a big boy. And uh, if it works like this, then maybe Bork's onto something. I don't know. And then last but not least, this is called simply the turbo fan and it's from Ethan. And the idea here was to mimic uh, a high bypass jet turbine blade. So the, the high bypass fan section that you see on most jetliners, the real big blade at the front that's turned and pushes a lot of air around the outside of the core and gives you most of that thrust. It's actually somewhat similar to this big boy up here, but that is the idea. He did a very good job executing it. You got very almost straight up and down uh, angle of attack or pitch angle and towards the hub and then softening out towards the tips. So he did a good job of making it look like the fan. He's actually the only one also that went with a dome-shaped front. Now, it doesn't normally matter. It's easier to print a flat one, I'll tell you that. But will the dome give him any more, any better flow? I don't know. But it looks cool. So A+. Plus. I would have to, if I was to rate these based on what I think the coolest looking fan is, inside, outside. Big fan. Just think that's a really cool idea. Uh, double, double layer blades. Little blades coming from the ring. I like it. Then I do like the uh, this turbo fan one just because jet engines are cool and this thing should be cool. The simple fan's actually probably three because although he called it the simple fan, it's got some detail to it. And then Bork, I don't know, uh, he's just out there, man. I mean, it's cool design, but the blades are hefty. Like this is, I could probably throw this and put a dent in the wall. And how well it's gonna perform given that it's gonna be kind of sucking air out versus pushing it in, I don't know but he might be playing 3D chess for all I know. Which, uh, I'd be interested to see which, you, which one is your favorite. I'm, I'm gonna bet the majority of people are liking the inside outside, but it'll be interesting to see. But now I think it's time to put them on the hub, see what they sound like, run them all, and see who's, who's number one versus number five. If somebody doesn't beat Bryce, I don't know what to tell you. So let's move over here. So I, I guess we'll time to talk about how we're gonna do this now because it has changed. Since you guys have spoken on the community tab, we are no longer going to noise normalize the fans. We're just gonna put them on there, let them spin as fast as they can. We are using a PWM fan, but I'm not giving it any PWM uh, signal, so it's just gonna be running full out. Uh, the normal speed of this fan in the stock configuration is 2000 RPMs. So that'll be kind of the limit, the high end, I guess, unless it's all gonna depend on the load put on the motor, but we're gonna plug it in, let it run as fast as possible. And if we do run into a situation where we get like a tie, then we will do a tiebreaker where we noise normalize to see who's the best performer. But for now, we're just gonna max it out. So this takes a minute to run all these tests because I gotta run 45 minutes of each to give everybody, find a good average. So we'll start out by putting every one of these fans on the hub and just listening to it and just see whose is the loudest because I think it'll be interesting. Not really a scored thing. We're just kind of going for performance only, but it'll be interesting to see whose is the loudest and who's the quietest. So let's start with this crazy ninja shuriken real quick. Oh, so tight. Two things. One, it is kind of loud. Uh, it does have some noise to it. Uh, secondly, it is pulling, pulling a lot of air through the radiator. So Bork and his giant brain might be onto something because this is actually going to do, I think it's gonna be Bryce. Bryce, I'm sorry. All right, let's check another one. Inside, outside fan, because it's just so interesting. Get in there.
Initial thoughts is I do think that this is actually a little louder, but they are both moving air. So let's check out the simple fan. This one I'm concerned that it's going to hit the backside if we push it all the way down. So I guess we'll find out. I think so. Oh boy. Okay, the blades are a little long. Uh, I think we can get by it though this time by just giving it pulled out a little bit just to give a little clearance. That should be better. Yeah, there we go. Now to my untrained ear. That actually sounds like it might be the quietest one so far. It is moving air, so we should have another another Bryce beater. <laughs> Phrasing. Last but not least, the jet turbine. The high bypass fan. The turbo fan, I think you called it. Sits on there very nicely. Beautiful. Now it's pretty quiet. <laughs> I don't think it's as quiet as this one. I think these are pretty similar actually, at least, at least to my ear, I don't know. It sounds like they're pretty similar, uh, but this is a higher pitch sound. So if I had to choose which one I wanted to listen to all day, the simple fan is probably, probably number one. It seems like the quietest, more, more low pitch sound. That's pretty high, it's not too loud. Uh, this, I think, is number two with uh, the inside-outside. It's a little louder than this one, but the pitch is still lower. And then I think of the turbo fan, and then this guy is the loudest. But none of that matters. So let me run all these fans through their, uh, their little Ida 64 stress test, and we'll come back and talk about how, how fast each one of them spun. So I'll take a RPM test or RPM reading, and we'll talk about who's number one versus number five. So place your bet, place your bets now. No cheating. Who do you think? Who do you think did the best? Who beat? Who beat Bryce? Do you, do you guys remember Bryce? Do you remember what number one's fan looks like? Remember, remember this guy? Yeah, that's number one. That's your leader. So uh, let's start with this guy. So Paulo's fan, Bork's fan here. The one that seemed to work backwards to what you'd actually think. Actually spun at a, a whopping 1,920 RPMs. And it didn't throttle. So Bryce, you're going to at least go to number two because Bork here managed to keep the uh, i7-7800K cool at an average temperature of 87.4 and a delta of 62.7. Boom. Current leader. What about the inside-outside fan? So this fan was designed by Thomas and it managed to spin at a whopping 1,860 RPMs wasn't too loud, wasn't too quiet, kind of right there in the middle. And again, yes, did not thermally throttle. This thing was able to complete the test, look good doing it, well, not being super loud. And it, it finished in with a average temperature of 86.3 and a delta of 61, just beating our buddy Bork here. So everybody's gonna scoot on down. Let the old inside outside fan in there. Here you go, Thomas, number one. So that leaves us with these two guys, the turbo fan and the simple fan. Now, while they were pretty similar on noise, this one was a little higher pitched, so this one was more pleasing to the ear. Uh, but let's just talk about the simple fan. What did the simple fan do? It's a simple design, it's got some vortex generators, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. It was a little heavy on the backside. We had to pull it out a little bit, so it didn't sit too well on the test bench. But the simple fan finished with an average temperature of 84.5 and that puts that at a delta of 58.3. So Carl, Carl is your new leader. So now we have Ethan and his turbo fan. So the turbo fan was able to pull this off at 1,661 RPM. So in case you didn't hear, I didn't actually tell you, the, the simple fan spun at 1,660. So this was 1,661. So pretty similar, pretty similar noise, a uh, little different pitch, but for the most part, they're pretty, Pretty similar, but was it able to beat the simple fan? Well, Ethan, your fan finished with an average temperature of 84.8, giving it an average or a delta of 59 degrees. So you just, you just got beat by the simple fan. 
And Bryce, you move, you move to the back, but you make it another week. So there's your current setup. The simplest design, and in fact called the simple fan, was actually the best performing, followed by the turbo fan, the inside outside, and big brain dork, dork, bork, and Bryce. Bryce is hanging in there. Now I did use different colored PLA. I won't be able to use, like in a perfect world, I'd use the same PLA for every test, but I just don't have that much pink or that much green. I'm gonna have to use whatever I got, so that's kind of a bummer, but it's as good as we can get it, and it's still a lot of fun, especially printing out the crazy stuff you guys come up with. So if you have an idea, make sure you get it designed, follow the template on my Thingiverse account, submit it to my fan showdown at gmail.com, get subscribed to the channel, and you'll probably see yours up here. You could even be like Bryce and been there two weeks in a row with a meme fan. But till next time, peace.